I, and I know at the end of the day, it's just a movie. We all agree on that. It's just a movie, I know. But I knew one thing for sure when I called out, when I, when I heard first about this movie. I knew I was in, I knew I was I knew I was skeptical and I was right on it. Number one. Okay, first of all, I did manage to see this in the theater. Okay, because I wanted this was I want. It's been over a year since I managed to, you know, because we all know why we couldn't go to the theaters, right? Well, it's been I haven't been to a movie theater in over a year. So I want to be this big epicness, right, to see this in the theater, right? But, I knew it was, I would because, one, number one, the freaking, no, I'm sorry, no, the fucking director. That's one, that's number, that was the one thing I was skeptical on, and I was right. For this thing, fuck this director. Adam Wingard, or I say Adam Wimbag. Yeah, his name's not Wingard, it's Wimbag. I hated the Blair Witch, because I knew it, because I hated, I hated the Blair, the 2016 Blair Witch sequel. Because you know, I love, I love the original Blair Witch Project, and the sequel, I freaking hated. Fucking hated, sorry. I don't apologize for this. I fucking hated Blair, Blair Witch. Um, I wasn't a fan of New Year Next. I said that already. Um, and more, and, and I did see, I, man, I did manage to see, um, the Death Note movie that he directed, the live action adaptation of Death Note. But now I fuck that now. No, no, no! I'm not giving this director no more pray, no more passes anymore. Yeah. So yeah, fuck Blair Witch, fuck You're Next, and fuck the Death Note movie. And now I heard he's gonna do a sequel to Face Off. Yeah, you know the the, the, the Face Off movie with the, the John Woo directed with John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. Yeah, now he's doing a sequel to that now. And why? Why do we need do we need a sequel to Face Off? Now a lot of people are love that love that movie. I liked Face Off. All right, but I prefer I prefer Broken Arrow over Face Off. That's just me though. We you know we, why we need a sequel to Face Off. So we need a, another Face Off movie where two people faces are gonna be switched. Why? So that guy's that's that guy uh, Wimbag. He's gonna be directing a sequel to Face Off. And more important, and more war I just heard. He's also gonna be directing a movie of the Thundercats movie. Now. I I've I have never watched Thundercats, the the cartoon or whatever, but my girlfriend, she's a huge fan of the Thundercats. Right? She loves the Thundercats TV show. She's a huge fan of the Thundercats. My girlfriend does. I don't want I, I basically well, I can't I can't judge it. I can't I can't I can't say I can't say though, but if she wants to see it, that's fine though. But to me I wouldn't recommend her to see that movie because of this director. That's just me. If she wants to see that, if she wants to, if she wants to see that movie, that's fine. Because basically, she doesn't really care who the director is, whatever movies they made. She doesn't really care about that, really. To be fair, because I know her. <laughs> but to me personally, I would not recommend her seeing it because this is what this guy has been doing. Because I, I, but I know say she wouldn't care though. Because like, she'd be like Kyle. I wouldn't really care what this director, who this director is, as I love Thundercats. I would say regardless, though. That's what she would say. But to me, I would personally say I want to recommend seeing this because of what this guy's been doing. I don't want to. I don't want to seeing it. He fucked up this movie, and he's he's a bit, and from for me personally, from all the movies he's done, he's gonna fuck up that movie next. Next. But that's just me, though. If she wants to see it, that's fine. Because she's a kid, she's a, she's a huge fan of Thundercats, but me, I don't want this guy getting no more jobs. I don't want him to hear directing another movie ever again. Like I said, Blair Witch was a piece of shit. Your your next wasn't to me. It wasn't like wasn't great. This movie, no. Even uh, Death, uh, yeah, the Death Note movie, no. But this movie, like I said, I was skeptical about this because of this director, and I was right. I gave this guy a chance on this. And guess what? I'm not giving this guy a pass no more. Whatever his movie's directing, he's coming out now, like Face Off 2 or Thundercats, no. I'm not, I'm not giving this director a pass no more. Adam Wimbag. That's what I'm calling him. Adam Wimbag. I know that's a harsh thing, but 
I'm not a fan of his movies. I'm not. Yeah. And... What would that's that, that's the number one thing, number two, number two right, once again a verses without basically barely any verses in it. And it's, it's, it's basically the same thing with Batman v Superman right, with the title with barely any verses of them in it, once again. I just hate when they do that when they basically just when they give it a title like that they, they don't fully live up to it. Because most of because most of the movie is basically like it was over basically a two hour movie. It's basically like basically what fifteen minutes at most, and it's barely focusing on other things. And this movie basically took took some of the Batman v Superman and put it in this. Basically, you know. And I mean, maybe as offended as a, as a fan of Godzilla, I love Godzilla growing up, you know. And more I think about it now, see that right there, that I re that I still prefer over this. Well, and even 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 King of the Monsters, I like I love Kong Skull Island and that and this one and this sequel too. But that sequel is better than this. Kong Skull Island is better than this. Now. Because one thing, because Michael Dow Dowerty, I, I knew he was more he was more passionate about on doing the sequel. I saw that. To me, to this, well, at least to me, I, I did see right. And here I also no passion in this, from the from the director. At least Michael Michael Dowerty because I like Trick or Treat, although I'm not a fan of Krampus though. But I highly enjoy Trick or Treat. But I wasn't a fan of Krampus, but he was. I see he was more passionate and he was um, doing King of the Monsters than and Wingard does. Even the score by Bear McCree, he was also passionate doing the score too and the music too, right? Um, like doing some of the retooling of the original OG music, right? Dun 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 dun. You know, right? And um. And I and I love that and I and I love the the reversion of Godzilla from Blue Oyster Cult's ver uh, version. I, I love that reversion of that. The, I don't ba I barely remember the score. Barely uh, remember the score in this. I don't. That's one thing. Who did the score for this film? Tom H Hogenborg. I don't know what this. I don't know what this guy has done. I don't. I know a lot of score guys who did scores, but I don't barely know this, who this guy is. I barely know the score the score for this movie. The score in King of the Monsters, even in Kong Skull Island, were better scores than this. Because Bear McCreary was more more passionate of doing you know doing some of the retooling of the original OG score, right? The score was better than this and that. So yeah, the score was forgettable. I barely know who this the score was. The directing by this this, this freaking guy, she's, and once again the human characters. Yeah, the human characters in King of the Monsters. I'll, I'll I'll give you the human characters in those were not really that great. Although I like Kyle Chandler, right? I like Charles Dance. Um, yeah, Millie Bobby Brown. I did not mind. I did not mind. I did not mind her in that movie. But here, Kyle Chandler. He's barely in the movie. He's only for one scene at the beginning and then a couple at the end. That's it. Well, that's so good. Okay, that sucks. I, I like because I like Kyle Chandler. He was barely in this movie. The only thing you know that you you know about it was when we said in the trailer, Godzilla's other hurting people. We do not know why. That's the only thing I know know him for is is that for saying that line from the trailer, and that sucks. Cause I like Kyle Chandler. He's put he's put on the back burner on this. He's barely in the movie. Hardly at what four minutes at most. Well, gee, that sucks. Instead, instead the lead the lead here is basically is Alexander Skarsgård, which basically Tarzan from the 2016 Legend of Tarzan. I know he's in the show True Blood, which I, I fear I'd never seen. It wasn't interested in True Blood. I know he was in Battleship, the 2012 film. Dink did not like that film. He was a Tarzan, the Legend of Tarzan. I didn't care about. He's he's a lead guy in this. The Gallic girl Rebecca Hall, which I liked her in The Gift, 
It was a thriller film with uh, the Joel Eggerton starred and directed, along with Jason Bateman. I like the gift. I don't know nothing about her except that she took in this deaf girl who can communicate with, with Kong sign language. The human cast for this movie pretty much sucks. The guy uh, was a Brian Terry Henry, Brian Terry Henry, which he was he was the detective in the 2019 Child's Play remake. I did not mind him in that remake. I know he's playing upcoming in the Eternals Marvel movie, The Eternals. Here, he was an annoying character. He's a podcaster, a conspiracy theorist, right? You know, you know what was this podcast? Titan True Conspiracy? I don't care. He's able to, to, to uh, shower himself with bleach. That's what he took from dialogue. He shows himself with bleach. And then opening, he makes his own, this guy tells him he makes his own hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. I didn't care about him at all. He was a he was a wacky, he was a wacky, you know, one of those like 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 like, like Mel Gibson, the conspiracy theorist, and all that stuff, right? In the movie Conspiracy Theory, yeah. Didn't I like? Did I care about him at all? And then what else? Uh, when well, he goes with Millie Bobby Brown, and was a Julian Dennison. He was the he was he was the kid, you know, in Deadpool two. Um, he was the kid who wanted revenge. On the guy who uh, abused him in that in that uh, orphanage, sort of, you know, he, he is the one that controls like controls fire. Then in the future, he killed uh, D uh, Cable's family that he wanted revenge on. That kid from Deadpool two, he's in this as this kid as this kid goes along with Millie Bobby Brown and Brian Terry Henry. I didn't care about I didn't care about him. So, and uh, well, some. Um, but I didn't care about Alexander. I didn't give a damn about Alexander Skarsgård or Rebecca Hall's character. Um, which you got now we get you got to throw in a human villain in this, like Charles Dance was in King of the Monsters. But I like Charles Dance though. But his villain was pretty much nothing. But this guy is played by uh, what was his name, Damien Demar. Uh, yeah, D Demand Bishar Bishar. Oh, I recognize him because he was in the he was at he was the, the nun you know like one of the Conjuring movies the nun and all oh, he was also an Alien Covenant he was the guy he was he was injured and they brought him back on the ship and later chestburster came out of him that guy he's your human villain Spo spoiler alert if you haven't seen this movie spoils I'm sorry got put spoilers in this sorry but yet throw a human villain in this really. And that's the thing. Most of this, this, most of this, I hate, I can't. Most, of, it's like the same with the Transformers movies or the the new uh, TMNT Ninja Turtles Nickelodeon movies. You know, whereas most of the human character, once again, human characters less on the freaking uh, title of the uh, monsters or the, or, the, or the title of the movies. More on the human characters, once again, which, which I gave sick and tired of, because of what because of script or budget things or for or what budget allows it basically. <sighs> yeah, 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 the monster universes, the human character, yeah, like the Transformers, the TMNT movies, the new ones, um, in this, in the monster universe movies, the characters are basically almost nothing, although, as I, I like Kyle Chandler, you know, but, um, even Charles Dance, but his villain was a nothing role, I think, well, Vera Farmiga, her character is basically most of the time the villain, oh, it does twist by the end of the movie, but still, it doesn't make up for what, for what she's done, for killing the world. But um, I like Kyle Chandler. My, Millie Bobby Brown, I did not, I did not mind her in that though. Um, Kong Skull Island, for the most part, of the human cast, I, I like Tom Hiddleston, John Goodman, I liked Sam Jackson. Oh, does he becomes like the Captain Ahab? That's they were, they were hinting at in the, you know, for that movie, Captain Ahab. I like Sam Jackson. John C. Riley, I enjoyed. Uh, he is basically the best, one of the best human characters in that franchise because you know, do he, he's during a time he was a vet. A World War II vet. He was stuck on there the whole lot of time. He didn't know how much time has passed because he was asking, "Oh, did we win the war?" By the time he didn't know it was years has gone by. He was a great character, you know. And finally, the time he got home to see his family for the first time, let alone his son. Wow, that's a character who was basically had more development than any character in the, in the whole entire franchise. And once again, the human characters, like I said, most of this movie is more on the human characters, less on on the actual title characters themselves. 
here there's more in the human characters and the deaf girl too and the, the focus is so much on this hollow earth the sub the subplot which they could have been used for a sequel for king kong basically you could have you know because this is more focused on king there's more kong, king blah, blah, blah. kong had king kong had more screen time than godzilla in this movie really enough which this could be a little a sequel to king kong for kong skull island really enough because kong had more screen time than godzilla in this movie really enough so this could have been a sequel to Kong Skull Island, him going, them going to this hollow earth they were so, they were so focused on. <sighs> yeah, this, is, this could have been, this could have been a spin-off before this whole verse is off. They could have. Why am I having this so I can calm myself down? So, so I don't go go throwing stuff around here. Yeah, they were so focused on this whole Hollow Earth. That's what most their main focus was for the most of the movie. And the verses. What about the verses? We well, you saw the trailer on the battleships. Kong, Kong fighting Godzilla on the battleships. Yeah, okay, Kong got the... Like you saw the trailer, everyone was so excited. Like my brother, he was so excited. Oh, Kong punched Godzilla, yeah! But Godzilla basically kicked a Kong's ass for the most part and basically almost drowned his ass. If it wasn't for the human characters that saved him. That's another thing. Human characters do most of saving these creatures in this franchise, right? Because, because you know, otherwise we wouldn't have no movie, actually. Yeah, because they, they use Jeff, they use Deb charges to save King Kong, and after that he just passes out. Mm. Oh, look at that! I'm game. I'm burping up because I'm talking about bullshit here. <sighs> my anxiety is kicking. My my anxiety is kicking in. And that's why I'm, I'm rocking back and forth. Because my anxiety is kicking in. Because I'm rocking back and forth here. Because I'm frustrated and I'm so pissed off right now. I know, I'm just doing my best to keep my calm to compose myself here. So yeah, I'm going all over the place, but yeah, because of how this opens up, because with the whole thing with Brian Terry Henry, yeah, there's this company called Apex, Godzilla comes in and destroys the facility. Then Brian Terry Henry sees the mechanical red eye. We know why. Um... But they're asking, why is Godzilla doing all this? Like, we see Millie Bobby Brown talking to her dad, Kyle Chandler, once again, um, Mark Russell. And which is too bad, he's barely in the movie. I'd rather have him be the lead once again than Alexander Skarsgård. And it sucks because I like Kyle Chandler. And I like him as an actor too, you know, I like some of the movies he's been in. Even though, you know, my, my, my parents, um, they remember him the most when he was younger um, in Pure Country with George Strait. You know, said tell when George Strait telling him, you know, get your ass out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was what George Strait was telling him in Pure Country, get your ass out of here. They thought that was that they thought they they like they like both. I like that movie and said that that was funny. <laughs> but yeah, but so, it sucked. Kyle Chandler is barely in the movie. Rather have him than Alexander Skarsgård because you don't know nothing. I don't care about any of these characters. I didn't care about Alexander Skarsgård's character. Becca Hall's character, Brian Tree Henry's character, Julian Dennis's character, well, um, did, uh, what was the guy's name? The the human villain, you could say, uh, uh, De De Ma Demand Shishar's villain character, I didn't give a damn about him. I didn't give basically nothing about the human character. Yeah, Millie Bobby Brown, yeah, I did mind her in King of the Monsters. I don't mind her here, but at the same time, now her character, I basically don't care now. Because she, well, thing is, well, she doesn't, she doesn't believe why Godzilla is doing that. Why is he doing? He must be doing it for a reason. She, he, he, she doesn't believe that he's bad and all that. Well, it's funny that really later on, when uh, on during the the on the battle, he killed but Godzilla. Godzilla killed people on the battleships when he was during his fight with King Kong on the ships. He, you know, he goes and rams right through a, ba a battleship and takes out another one. You bet he killed people there. <sighs> 
and I will, I will say I will. I forgot to mention. When I did my talks on the trailer, I did I did say one thing though, and I was wrong on. It probably proved a lot proved a lot of people wrong. Okay, fine. Once again, here we go, Bergman again. Okay, I was wrong. Um, I I'll give I'll give I'll give you credit that I was wrong on this. The whole time, it was actually Godzilla. It wasn't Mecha Godzilla the whole time we was finding King Kong, you know, like in the trailers, when well, the, well, the ships were in the city. I thought the whole time that was Mecha Godzilla in disguise, you know. You know, like in this movie, he disguised himself as Godzilla when he fought Anguirus and basically ripped his his mouth open. That was Mech Godzilla in disguise. Okay, I was wrong. That was actually Godzilla, right? Because Mech Godzilla doesn't come until like the last fight in the movie. So okay, you okay movie, you proved me wrong. Like you get you get a pass on that. Okay, I'll give Adam Wingard a pass or the writer is a pass on that. Okay. Yeah, you proved me wrong. The whole time, it was Godzilla the whole time. It wasn't Mega Godzilla in disguise. Okay, I give you kudos to that. But does that does, does that disregard everything? Uh, no. Okay, you don't get. I don't get no praise to this director. You should, he's still not direct any more movies. No, I'm not giving this guy no more chances anymore. <laughs> Screw that. See, I'm rocking back and forth because my my anxiety is up again, and uh, that's why I'm rocking back and forth. I'm using this to freaking compose myself so I don't go. Stupid. Where was I at? So the trio, Billy Bar Brown and company, they. Go back to the broken Apex facility. They go underground and they see skull crawlers. You know the skull crawlers from Kong Skull Island. They get on this railway system, goes all the way to Hong Kong, and that's where they find discover Mecha Godzilla. And the human villain is the guy from Alien Covenant and, and the Nun. I forgot the uh, keep messing with the, messing with the guy's name. I don't care. And uh, the guy apparently has a, he has a a protege. And it turns out he's the son of Sarazawa, you know, Ken Wan Ken Wanabe's character in the previous two Godzilla movies. Barely he has a he has a son and he's a complete asshole. Cuz you know, with Ken Wan Ken Wanabe's character, you know, first of the, the first movie goes, "Let them fight." Here in the King of the Monsters, um which honestly was a bet one of the Basically, the best part of the movie was his self-sacrifice to revive Godzilla. Yeah, I know. The human human characters saving the monsters, you know. Like, in that movie, yes. Even Kong Skull Island as well. Even in the first 2014 movie, it was Aaron Taylor Johnson who helped save Godzilla. Who brought back Godzilla, I, I think. I don't remember now. And even in this movie, they, they, they when they're helping King Kong out. But yeah, with King of the Monsters, you know, it was... More of an emotional moment because first you have Bear McCree's uh, uh, score, oh, right, and most uh, besides the score, everything was silent afterwards when the explosion happened, and and then Ken Wanabe, you know, you know, touching Godzilla, you know, and saying, you know, goodbye, old friend. You know, I I, I, I like that Ken Wanabe. Other than Kyle Chandler, he was only the other human character I liked, and it's, and uh, his self sacrifice. Okay, I. It was like the best part, especially how the whole scene went with the score and the silence, and when he said that as well. But here he has here he has a son. He's a complete asshole. Basically goes against everything what his dad did, you know. Because because uh, apparently he has no. Like I said, spoilers once again. Um, apparently, um, Billy. But well, Billy Mega Godzilla is actually a a link to. The skull of King Ghidorah, I guess, is from the from the, the severed head that Charles Dance bought off at the end of the movie. I guess because it's, it's it's the skull, it's the head of King Ghidorah. The only thing that was the severed head from the previous movie. Apparently, he uses it, which is kind of like kind of like the helmet. He's using it like it's Cerebro from X Men, using his like to link against it to control Mecha Godzilla. But apparently, I guess. We, the, the, I guess the Mecha Godzilla has a mind of its own and did basically didn't need him anyway. 
But yeah, but that guy, that guy has a mind of its own now. But so he didn't need it, but it gets killed anyway. But basically, but the like the son is as an asshole goes against what his everything was father did with him believing in Godzilla and all that stuff. Because you know, because the reason was because you know they want to make God the Mecha Godzilla. Because the Demian Shashar's character saying with the alpha the, the, the humans should be the alpha, so that's why they wanted to eliminate Godzilla. And the whole thing was just... And the whole thing, the whole subplot... Was basically... Most of this movie was focused on this whole subplot of the of this hollow Earth. So I guess there's a whole new other world... That's basically where the core of the Earth is, basically, I, I guess. There's a whole other world where... That's where, they were taking, that's where they were taking uh King Kong at. To go to this portal... That teleports to this other world... You know, it's like a world where there's land all going, like, all in a circle, basically. And there's other creatures there. And what a creature almost, basically, almost suffocates, um, suffocates King Kong. But once again, the human character has to save them, save him. It's like how, how basically, how he was almost got drowned by Godzilla. And the human character has to save him because of depth charges. And now that they say they save him once again, <sighs> it's like it's like Ken now Ken what I was saying now let them fight right, let the, let them fight. But in case it makes it makes King Kong like a pussy, you know he can't hold on his own. He's supposed to be this very strong, very strong Titan, but he can't hold on his own. He has to be saved once again by human characters, by humans again. And then he goes where basically is where his his ancestors and his ancestors and where his ancestors were. Gotta slow myself down here again. So I'm getting worked up again. Which I thought the whole thing I thought I thought they were on Kong's uh, uh, on Skull Island. You know how the skeletal remains when they were in that gassy field where the skull crawlers are. There was a the skeletal remains of his parents. I thought that's where they originally from there. But I guess it was from they came all the way down deep in this hollow earth. Because there's a, there's a this big stone gate here, and when he goes inside, there's this big throne, and there's this axe, which is straight, which is which is kind of like a copy of Stormbreaker from the Marvel universe. So, but so how but how do they build this? What, did his ancestors build this whole build that whole throne up, and the, the the axe, and the I have no idea. And that's basically their, their whole focus on these characters, focus on this whole all Earth, and getting Kong home. In the meantime, Godzilla, he's in Hong Kong, and, and that's another thing that's, that's weird. Well, well, first of all, the human there's this other human villain, I guess the, the main villain, he has a daughter, and he was there to get a sample to power up make Godzilla. But she dies anyway, so I, I didn't give a damn about her anyway. Once again, a human character I never gave a shit about. But she dies, so I didn't care. And then the funny thing is, in the in King Kong, I mean, no, no, Godzilla. The reason why he was doing this, which first is make it seem like he was a bad guy, but technically he's not. Although he killed people on on the sea, the battleships. But technically he's not the villain because he doesn't. You know, you well, you know what I mean. Um, the reason why he's do he attacks the he took the he attacked the Apex in the beginning. Uh, because he knew. What the people were building, he sensed that what they were doing. I guess, as they wanted him to, they wanted to replace him with this. So that's why he attacked the facility in the beginning, and he knew that they're in Hong Kong. It's in Hong Kong, and it's also funny thing is another thing that's another thing that's weird is that um, he can also sense where King Kong is. He can sense all the way down, down hundreds of miles. To the whole Earth, and he's at the very, he's at the right at the very spot where he uses a, his atomic breath, basically drills all the way down there, right to where King Kong is. So now he knows what's going. So, so I guess he's Godzilla is very is very psychic now. He knows what's going on, what the humans are building, or what they're doing, and he also know he can also knows where King Kong is at the same time. 
and he, he just I mean, he used the atomic breath, his atomic breath to drill right down the exact mo, right the exact spot where King Kong is at. And it's funny that you know the whole teleportation where they went through in the first place that takes a whole longer, but. Apparently, I guess where Godzilla drilled with his atomic breath down to that spot, I guess this is a very much shorter way to get to, from there to the Hollow Earth now. Because King Kong, he can just he just climbs all the way up there within like almost basically like in seconds. I don't know. I don't. I can't explain that part. Yeah, he he literally just climbs all the way up, right, straight up to there, in seconds. Where how it took compared to how much it took longer to get into that place in, in the first place, you know, to the Hall Earth. And I'll give you this, yes. Although I said basically almost like what, an hour and ten fifteen minutes in, or what was an hour? Oh no, no, maybe maybe an hour and thirty minutes in, as we get the next. Fight of the supposed verses, because the verses was basically like, what, what, two, three minutes of this under two hour movie. It was an hour and fifty three minutes without incredible, but still, on the ships, where basically Kong basically got uh, uh, dr got basically drowned, almost drowned like a bitch, and had the humans had to save him. Wasn't that much, and it was it was it wasn't as much as her people are so hyping it up to be. Like my brother. Oh, he Godzilla punched Gods. He King Kong punched Godzilla. Yeah, okay, but Godzilla basically, um, almost drag, almost drowned Kong's ass, and but before the humans had to save him, it wasn't much. And then here in the fight in Hong Kong, okay, I'll give you that. The fight, yeah. Once again, visuals is good. I'll give you that. for the budget. It was it was one hundred sixty to two hundred million. Yeah, it's visually good looking, with, especially with the with our monsters and how it was. Yes, like the like the previous film, the visuals was good, but once again, you can't just rely on pretty visuals to save your movie. Once again, the same thing with those new Star Wars movies. Nice visuals, but you can't rely on that to save your movie because you have to have care about story and characters. Have to balance that out as well. Here I get none of that. No characters in the story. The subplot of the Hollow Earth was, why? <laughs> but the fight, yes, the fight where King or Hong Kong, King Kong, in comparison, where the fight, okay, was decent. I'll give it that. You know how Hong Kong with all the buildings were lit up. It was nice visually. It was. You know uh, King Kong using the axe to block. Um, Godzilla's atomic breath. Okay, cool. Kong stabs in the leg with it, but for the like also good majority, uh, Godzilla almost beats King. If he's not, if it was, if, if King Kong didn't have the axe, Godzilla basically was beating Kong's ass down, and then to all but till the end, um, he stepping on him constantly, and he could have killed King Kong right there, but yet there. You know, um, roaring at each other, and when you when you when this is where you get like I, I see like comparisons to Batman v Superman, because how you know how Doomsday was you know how Doomsday was created from Zod, really enough. Um, basically, Mega Godzilla is basically created through the, you could say parts of King Ghidorah, basically. Kind of, kind of similar, kind of similar to that. There, I see something right here. There's a little bit of comparison right there, and I was waiting for I was waiting for them to, when they're roaring at each other. I guess they're saying, you know how we're, it's like with Batman and Superman were fighting each other when Batman was basically close to he could have killed Superman right there until Superman said Martha right. And it was the same thing right here. Godzilla could have killed King Kong when they're roaring at each other. I guess somehow in their language you must have said Martha. You get what I mean, right? But then, he, then he, but Batman lets Superman go because of that, and then King, and then Godzilla lets Kong go after that because of that. And oh my God! And then I guess I get the comparisons, like you said, you know how Doomsday was created from Zod, 
and Meg Godzilla was basically created from King Ghidorah. Don't you see a pattern there? And then, the, and then once again, the human Alexander Skarsgård, a human, had to bring back, like how Ken Wanabe have, like Ken Wanabe revived Godzilla to that nuclear explosion here. Alexander Skarsgård revives Kong via that vehicle, sort of like like a, a defibrillator, basically, to boost his heart up again. And boom, he's up and about again. And then Mega Godzilla comes out. Basically, have a mind is only kills the human villains, and once again, I'm spewing bull crap out again. And then, and then, big God, Mech Godzilla kicks Godzilla's ass. I know, like I said, he gets his ass beaten in by the Mutos in the previous film. King Adora gets beats his ass in that movie. I know. I know, I know, but I I I nitpicked about that as well. I know. And but Mega Godzilla just basically beats him down more, and then funny enough, how and then funny enough, King uh, King Kong, he basically just destroys. Uh, which it was also say it was cool. It was cool too. He destroys Mech Godzilla. Isn't that kind of funny? How King uh, Godzilla beats King Kong. Mega Godzilla beats Godzilla, and then King Kong beats Mega Godzilla. Isn't that kind of funny? Although it was like Godzilla, he, um. Heats up the axe with his uh, Kong's axe with his atomic breath, and then uh, King Kong destroys Mechagodzilla easily, which is cool. It was cool. I'll give it that. You know, it, it was cool to how King Kong destroyed Mechagodzilla. If it wasn't for Godzilla's help to, to uh, charge up that um, that axe, and then they after that they both stare each other down. Then Godzilla leaves. And then Godzilla goes back home to the ho his home in the Hollow Earth. <sighs> oh my God! I want to fight. How many minutes combined total of of a of an hour and fifty three minute movie? What was the combined total for the so called verses this title gave? What, for the fight on the ships? What, three minutes? Or five? And then at the end, with a fight in Hong, they're fighting in Hong Kong. Oh, yeah, and then, they're, 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 then they face off against Meg Godzilla. That's another thing. You want to compare it to Batman v Superman, right? You know, then the two the two title characters, then they face off against the, another, against the, the, other, the main villain, you could say. You know, Batman v Superman. And, um... Uh, Batman and Superman face off against uh, Doomsday. Well, of course, he added Wonder Woman there as well. But after the, they then fight each other, then they face off against Doomsday. And here, but then once they fight each other, they face off against uh, Mega Godzilla. There's a pattern here, you know, if you don't, if you don't see it. I'm really so sick of this. You know, the the the, the if, if you're making a versus right. You really give him a versus instead of focus and taking out all the other villains, other uh, subplots, and less on the humans. You would get that, but you don't. And I knew, I knew there wasn't. I knew there was basically going to be no winner once again. If Batman Superman, well, Superman died though because of Doomsday though. But if you do a versus, there's no winner. It's pointless because of that. Or, yeah, AVP as well. Alien vs. Predator. I forgot to mention another versus Alien vs. Predator. Well, you can cut... Well, in the first one, both died, so... And even the sequel, they both die. So there's no winner there. Yeah, AV, both AVP, AVP movies both die anyway, so there's no winner for, for the versus. Like the tagline, whoever went... It's funny, the tagline for... Alien vs. Predator, whoever wins, we lose. Technically, n neither won, but we, but the human won anyway. The girl was the last one standing. So, both lost. We won, basically. So that tagline for a Alien vs. Predator was, was a lie. And the tagline for this one, 
Um, one will fall. None of them really fell. Really enough. So it was again pointless. What's another, what's another versus that was basically... Like I said, Alien, Alien vs. Predator. No. Batman vs. Superman, definitely not. This film... I can't stop freaking burping. This film is giving me the burps. Like, I swear, you know? That's when we talk about this movie. My stomach is growing up and doesn't want me to spew out this bullshit anymore. Perhaps I should just cut it right here. I don't know. But what, uh, what other verses there was? Let's see, you got that, that, AVP. I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, Freddy vs. Jason. How can I forget? That was that, that was that was more of Freddy vs. Jason. They that film gave more, yeah, granted you had shitty human characters, which I didn't care about either though. Once again, but that gave more favor. That was more of a versus than any of the movies I have more than ADP, more than oh actually. Well, I did like that that for the fight between the one predator and the alien in AVP though, but still, but it wasn't a good movie anyway either. Regardless. But there was more more Freddy versus Jason fighting in the dream sequence, and then the fun fight at the end of the movie where they're kicking each other's ass. That was basically a fight that was worth a versus worth watching, you know. And and, and Robert England as Freddy Krueger, you know, man, the torpedoes, or oh, give me a break, hey asshole, over up here, <laughs> or welcome to my nightmare. That was a, that was that was a fun it was a fun let alone a bloody fight as well, you know. Freddy gouging uh, Jason's eyes, chopping him with his own machete, Jason ripping his arm out. That was a that was a fun brutal fight, probably the best verses I've seen on the screen. But the rest of them no. And this is another pity of another false. Versus, because we we both because we both know neither one was gonna fall because otherwise it's just, it's just gonna piss off fans of either side, right? It's either gonna piss off King Kong fans or Godzilla fans. Although the, each one did basically did a get won a bat won a round basically like Godzilla technically won the first round where he almost dra drowned King Kong's ass, right? And King Kong beat Mega Godzilla. So, like, he won something, but... Although he almost got killed by Godzilla the second time. So, you could say... Out of, uh, three fights... Godzilla technically won two, so you could, so you could say technically Godzilla's the winner. But there is but there's no win or lose situation either way, though, but still. I'm just so I'm just pissed because I love Godzilla, right? Most of the Godzilla movies I've seen are better than this. I don't even say King of the Monsters with its with its issues though is better than this. Like I said, I like Kyle Chandler, Ken Watanabe's scene. Yeah, um, the score was better than this movie. This movie had I couldn't remember what the score was. Yeah, the human characters in this film suck for the most part. Kyle Chandler was barely not in the movie. He could have just been Kyle in the movie altogether. What was the point of his character? For continuity, I guess. The direction by Michael Darby was much better than Adam Wimbag and say his directing. He's the, he's the main issue with this. Great, you know. He shouldn't do any more movies again. I don't want him to do a sequel to Face Off or Thundercats movie. The, the, the writing is at the writing is at fault too. Human characters, for the most part, no. False verses. You get once again a barely verses in the movie. Pointless human villains. Like I said, I'll give a, one thing a, a couple of things a pass. I was wrong on the whole thing that the whole we thought the whole time that it was Mega Godzilla in disguise. I was wrong on that. It was Godzilla the whole time. I I was wrong. So you get a pass for that. Yeah, you get some. You got a nice. It was visually it was good looking. Yes. 
especially when King Kong were fighting Godzilla in Hong Kong with the whole buildings and how, how Hong Kong is lit and all that. That was pretty visually, I will say. But while the stuff I uh, the fight they had was decent, and yeah, it was cool that King Kong beat how he just just destroyed Mecha Godzilla. But what else is what else is there? They like said human for 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 the most of it you get like I said barely versus in this because it's focused on the human characters once again more and the whole thing with Mecha, with them. Uh, when then Billy Mega Godzilla or the whole subplot of the whole Hollow Earth, which you could have say that could have say that for a sequel because, and, and King Kong had more screen time than Godzilla did, so this could have been technically like a King a a, a Kong, two basically, if you were going with have him more have more screen time, and the whole thing with a human girl communicating through sign language, and the whole focus on the Hollow Earth, this could technically be a Kong two you know. And leave out Godzilla out of it altogether. If you're focusing on this whole Earth setting so much. Alexander Skarsgård, Rebecca Hall's characters, didn't care about. Like, the Brian Hen uh, Terry Henry's character, definitely did not care about. Oh, and I forgot to mention how Julie Dennison, oh yeah, the, the, the guy that was with them. Oh yeah, how he basically stopped making Godzilla from almost killing Godzilla, right? Oh, the, the kid, he basically just takes, um, Brian Terry Henry's, uh, his a uh, uh, thing of whiskey, and he pours on the controllers, and that almost kind of like stops Meg Godzilla, and that's how they got the the um the upper hand at the end. Oh, because they couldn't find out where the password was. Oh, he just pours some, just pours some of this on the controllers, and that basically stuns Meg Godzilla for a couple seconds, just enough for them to get the upper hand. Yeah, so once again, human characters saving them, saving their asses once again. <sighs> I I don't know what I can say. I I prefer King. I rather prefer King of the Monsters better. Oh yeah, whatever happens to the other Titans? Because I guess in the beginning they're all exed out, defeated, defeated, defeated. Right. So I guess Rodan was defeated as well, along with the other ones. The the remaining ones at the end of King of the Monsters, they're all bowing down to. I guess Rodan and the others they were defeated. I guess they're dead. I guess. And they're saying if they're X'd out, defeated, they're dead. Although I might have missed that. I don't think Ro Rodan wasn't on there. I might have missed that, but who cares? Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah, basically hour fifty three minutes, and basically at what at most ten minutes of that was the verses. So once again, false again. Most of this subplot, this whole Earth subplot, and the humans. More screen time on that. Even King Kong had more screen time than Godzilla. It should have been his own. This probably long enough to be his own spin off, his own sequel, really enough. So goddamn man. I don't know what I can say. I was I was I said before at the opening of this I was skeptical because. Of the director, and I was right. Adam Wimbag, that's his name is Adam Wimbag. I'm not calling him by Wingard. He's Adam Wimbag. I'm not giving this guy another chance again. I was skeptical. I was gonna give him a chance on this, but I, I, I was right. I'm not giving this guy no more chances anymore. Like I said, Death Note, you're next, especially Blair Witch. Shit. I'm not giving this guy no more passes, no more chances anymore. Sequel to what was the point of a face-off sequel? Why? And Thundercats, he's gonna screw that up now. Which I, although granted, I never, I hardly ever watched Thundercats, the cartoon show. But like I said, my girlfriend, you know, she loves them. She loves Thundercats. She's a, she's a big fan of it. If she wants to see it, that's fine. Bob is telling her, I would, I would just tell her, I would recommend you to see it because this director, he's been screw, screw, screwed up so much. His past films, this film included now. I don't want to see this Thundercats. Grant, I guess I can't stop her. She'll she she's she's the type of person she doesn't care about who who directed it. She just wants to see it because she's a fan of the show. But I'm I would I would just tell her, you know, for me from my experience, I would not recommend you see it because this director should not be getting no more jobs. Adam Wingard Wimbag. This film, yeah, 
already one of the worst I've seen now. Yes, because as I said, as a fan of Godzilla, I'm offended. I rather was it. I rather watch the 1998 movie. The characters either were better. Well, like I said Matthew Broderick, Jean Reno, and Hank Azaria, Kevin Dunn. You know, better characters. You know, like I said, Kyle Chandler and that Ken Watanabe were like the best human characters I've uh, in this franchise. Or you know, even no, no, no. I include John C. Riley because I because I enjoy Kong Skull and a lot. I will include John C. Riley in that as well because I I like his character in that. So yeah. So, Kyle Chandler sucked. He's barely nothing. He could have been on this movie at all. But for continuity, I guess. But I'm talking about in that movie. Yeah, Kyle Chandler, Ken Watanabe, you know, goodbye, old friend. And John C. Riley. And I'll say even Tom Hiddleston. I like, because I like Tom Hiddleston in that as well. <laughs> that was a more, pa there was more passion for Michael Dougherty and the composer Bear McCree in that than the director and composer in this movie. I saw no passion in this at all. But well, in my opinion, there was passion. In my opinion. Go, go, Godzilla! And I, and I love that reversion of that song. So, yeah, I, like I said, I, 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 did, I, I skeptical about the director, and I was right. Did not give this guy no more chances no more. This movie sucked. Once again, false another false versus. Because because we knew because we knew that was not going to happen because it it was going to piss off e fans of either side, right? Oh, I'll just say you. Well, oh, oh, now I think about what is worse, this film or Shin Godzilla? Because I forgot to mention I forgot to mention how bad, for good reason. I wanted to forget about Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla. Maybe I could say Shin Godzilla was worse. Now I think about it. Because Shin Godzilla, she's... That was way bad. But the other Godzilla movies, most of them I enjoyed. Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster, the Sea Monster, Gigan, Megalon, um, Destroy All Monsters, Final Wars, GMNK, um, which that was a cool one. Um, what else? The, the, the original Gojira, of course, that's that because that's an all-time classic, and I'll even put the 98, 1998, once again, the 1998 Godzilla movie above this, much better, because like I said, that's one of my all-time favorites, highly underrated, I know that continues to get, I'm pointing because I'm still pointing at it, I know that film continues to get hate to this day, but I'll... Def still defend it. I'll still defend it. I've talked about this on my channel, reviewed it a lot of times. How I, I I'm still defending that movie. That movie is miles better than this movie. I'm still saying it. I know people will be can be people can be pissed at me for that, but like I said I don't care because I love that movie. I love the movie. It was a great theater experience. I saw growing up back in 1998. I'll, I'll always defend the 1998 film. My brother can make fun of, makes makes fun of that movie all he wants. I always debate him on that. He can make fun of me. Like I said, he can call that one Zilla. I hate that name. It's Godzilla. I know the design. People hate that design of Godzilla, but I can defend that though. Yes, I know the original look. I still prefer the original Godzilla over that design though. But I can still design uh, defend it on its own merit on its own terms. So yeah, my brother we butt heads a lot on that. For, for, for on me defending it. That's just us though. But still I'm just another thing. But I always defend that movie. Miles better than this. Even King of the Monsters. Which that, that film got more hate. Well this one got praised. Really enough. This one got more praise than that film did. And I, and I like that film much more than this. So yeah. I don't want to talk more about this film. I'm, I'm, I'm more... Like I said... I don't I, I, I explain everything I, why I don't like about this film now. This is also one of the worst films I've seen this year. There's a, there's a film I saw earlier, earlier like like last well, last week, I thought it was much better. It was a film I was looking forward to. But I'll, um, I'll get to that if I, I talk about it sometime later. Although like you say, I do like that film a lot better than this movie. Like I said, like I said, I'm just 
My anxiety is going up, and that's why I'm rocking again. Just get me riled up like this, and just getting all bent out of shape now. But I hope you enjoy this big rant. Also, I was looking forward to it, though, but at the same time, I was skeptical about the director, and I was right. That's the men. That was the main issue. I'm not, and I'm not apologizing for it. It's my opinion. In my opinion, okay. If people like this film, good on you. I let's say I hold no ill will towards anybody who likes this film. But in my opinion, this film sucks. It is. As a as a fan of Godzilla, even I like King Kong though. But basically, fan of Godzilla, I'm offended and I'm highly upset about it. That's just me though. It's in my opinion. So anyway, I already explained everything else. I want to keep on repeating myself. But thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next uh, review or more videos. All right. Screw this film. Oh no, no, no I don't want to say that. That's taking it too lightly. Fuck this film. That's how I put it bluntly. Fuck this film. Later.